everybody, this is one of the first lessons I do in art, and most of you who've had me before will know the answers to it, so I kind of expect us to get through this part quickly. Say it with me. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Genesis 1-1. That is where art begins. What does the whiteboard have to do with art? Speak up so I can hear you. Quick, quick, quick. Okay, yeah, that's the next part of it there. The, the board has to do with art. I can draw on it. I can write scripture on it. I can use it as a teaching tool. There's lots of reasons that we have a whiteboard. But what does the whiteboard have to do with God? Um, God washed out all our sins, and that reminds us like when we were raised the whiteboard. That's, that's exactly right. When the whiteboard is perfectly white, we can use that as an illustration that Jesus died on the cross to wash away our sins. Because it's white and it's clean before we put writing on it, isn't it? But God made the art board. But now did God go, boom, there's a white board? No. He did not. What did he do? Yes, ma'am. He gave the idea to man to make it. He gave the idea to man to make it. He gave man a what? A brain to use, didn't he? And with that, he gave us knowledge. Now, the whiteboard has a lot to do with art besides just being able to use it. God gave man the ability to come up with the idea. He gave man the chemicals to put together to make the whiteboard. He gave man the physics to make it strong to stand up so that we could use it. He also gave man the ability to apply, apply math to it. What would history have to do with the art board? Did we always have an art board? No. We did not, did we? Before we had an art board, we had a chalkboard, didn't we? And before we had a chalkboard, there really wasn't much to have to write on at all. Man had paper, but before he had paper, what did he have? Yes, ma'am? The ground. The ground, maybe a stick to write on the ground, or a rock to carve on the wall, or even a piece of wood. A lot of the early art is done on pieces of wood. They applied paint to flat pieces of wood. So there was a lot that goes on in history before we even had the art board. But usually as things move along, Man needs something else to make his job easier. He comes up with the idea to make it that way. And God gave man the ability to do that. But God's creation is perfectly ordered. The physics, the chemistry, the math, the history, the art, the music, the language. All that applies to this. And art applies to it. Think about the drawings that had to go into make, making the art board. Putting down the measurements, the precise measurements to make the art board. The measurements of the chemicals. So all that applies, language applies, because you have to accomplish it, don't you? But think about everything else that went into this whiteboard. There had to be a design drawn for the factory where it's made. There had to be chemists that put the chemicals together. Even the machines that make it in a plant, all those had to be drawn, and all those are designed, and all that is a part of art. Math is definitely there. But now, how does the whiteboard get here after it gets made in a um, plant? What about an airplane that might bring it here? Think about the design of an airplane. Think about the trucks that have to be made. Think about all the math and all the science and all of the language that goes into making those elements to even get it here. Now, we might put a whiteboard in the back of our vehicle, might we, to get it here. Those vehicles have to get made also. Even a ship, if it comes from a foreign country, a lot of times, think about a ship that floats and the physics that has to go into making that ship and that lift on the airplane to get it in the air. 
and God gave man all those abilities. So where does it all begin? Right here. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Okay, that's our beginning lesson in art. And today we're going to look at a part of his creation, and that's owls. Now, this is an elementary lesson for most of you, but we're going to review it. Lines make shapes. Shapes make pictures. That's the magic of lines. One more time. Lines make shapes. Shapes make pictures. That's the magic of lines. Um, so we're going to look at owls today. If you can draw a V and you can draw the top part of a heart, an oval, more ovals, a circle, a kite, and maybe even part of a triangle, then you can draw an owl. And let's look at these shapes. Now take out a pencil, you've got your papers in front of you, draw a line, we're gonna sketch, turn your paper vertical. And the very first part we're gonna draw is the top part of a heart. Can you use black? I was about to say, I probably need to get something darker. How about blue? There we go, is that better? Yes. Okay, the top part of the heart. Doesn't look like an owl yet though, does it? No. But look right here where I put a V in here. See the V? Don't go too far out. I can't see it. Oh, there we go. I need to step back for you, don't I? Now then, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put two circles in here. Circle. Circle. I'm going to add a kite. Upside down V. Even longer V at the bottom. I made his beak, didn't I? And you can make it a little closer to his eyes, and that's why I sketch it with pencil. Remember to keep it light until it's right, so you can erase your lines if you need to correct them. Now, I'm not putting eyes in here, but I'm going to put a dot right in the middle of the eye. Looks well, kind of funny, doesn't it? I'm only putting a dot there because I want you to be able to see where to draw the eyes. We're going to start a circle at the dot and make a circle right there. I want the eyes to go closer to the nose, so that's why I'm making it to the inside of the dot, closer to the where you've drawn his nose, his beak. Yeah, because an owl doesn't have a nose, he has a beak, doesn't he? All right, starting to look like an owl, isn't it? Now, if you go and make a little bit more of a circle around that one, it even looks more like an eye, because we're going to color the center in solid, and we're going to leave one little white spot so it looks like it's reflecting light. We're going to color the pupil of the eye in and leave one little white spot. It's hard to do with marker. You can do better than I with pencil. And there we go. The marker's not filling it in too good, but you get the idea. This one looks good. All right. Pull your lines down a little bit more, and we're going to kind of make it flat here. Almost looks like a tomato now, doesn't it? The top of the heart with a tomato. <laughs> All right. Now, the sides of the owl, look at how big the head is. The lines, we're going to do the oval down. And I need to come out a little further over. See how I'm drawing over my lines to correct it? That's just fine. But in order to make the body, it needs to be about the width of the head. And this right here, I don't like to draw the real solid line there because an owl has feathers and it's not going to be a solid line later. Now then, with his wings, I'm just going to 
just going to do curve in, curve out, curve in, curve out. And these will be his wings. You can go back and put some little ripply lines in here. And you can do better with pencil than I can with marker on the, the feathers for the owl, but you can put his, his uh, tummy feathers in here. Now then to make his feet, we're gonna do three ovals. First oval is bigger, and I'm drawing over till I get the size I want. Put a smaller oval to each side, and you got one foot. Do the same thing on this side, oval, and two little ovals. Come on. Now look what happens when you do a line right here. What am I doing? What is that line going to be? Yes, ma'am. Um, you're making the owl sit on a branch. I'm making the owl sit on a branch, aren't I? And maybe out here we want that branch to fork. Make a V come in here and make it fork. See how you can make your branch fork? Now also down here, he probably has his tail feathers hanging down. And you come, can come in here and add a little bit to the corners to give him more feathers. And his head still needs some work too, doesn't it? Right here, you can come in and do just a little bit of the horned owl look. There's all different kinds of varieties of owls that God has made. I think your barn owl kind of has a smooth head. All right, there you go. Now practice that. You've got the shapes down and these are looking really, really good. Really good and hi to my at-home learners.